Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today we're going to be going over some tips and tricks for getting into Prey. I just beat the game, had an absolute blast with it, but I wish there was a few things I knew before I really sunk my teeth in. We'll be covering where to get some of the good early game weapons, what neuro mods you might want to unlock first, and I'll even go over some of the mid-game strategy to help you stay on top of your ammunition and health. Prey is available right now. If you want to pick it up, click the link in the video description. Now the game itself takes place on Talos 1, which is a space station that's been taken over by an alien threat. Because of this, resources can be very limited, especially early in the game. And had I known some of the tips and tricks I'm going to be giving away in this video, I probably could have avoided some of the more difficult portions of the game where I had to fight strong aliens with nothing more than a wrench. It wasn't easy to say the least. Now very early in the game you get one of the more useful tools which is the glue cannon. This doesn't do any damage to enemies but it can be used to freeze enemies and also make climbable objects. There is a small structure that you can climb up in the start right when you get that glue cannon but if you take it a step further you can actually get to the second level balcony and up there you can find a disruptor stun gun. This is a close range weapon that can knock out humans, stun the Typhon, and even act as sort of a close range EMP device against robots. This is a quick and easy way to increase your arsenal right at the start. Now another weapon that's incredibly easy to overlook, but still very important to the early and mid game, is the pump action shotgun. Heck, I actually use this thing all the way into late game. It's a great weapon that you can upgrade throughout the entire campaign. You can get this weapon by going into the security office on the lobby of Talos 1. Basically, once you're in there, you want to climb up on this yellow pipe, walk the length of the yellow pipe, and you'll find an air duct. Through there, you can drop down into an office where there is a shotgun waiting on the table. If you don't get the shotgun at this point in the game, it could be mid-game until you get access to this weapon, so I highly recommend grabbing it now. You won't have a lot of ammunition for it early on, but that's not to say it can't come in handy. Now, not too much further in the campaign, when you're in the hardware labs, you'll be able to fabricate a small jetpack that'll allow you to exit the airlock in the hardware labs and explore the outside of the space station. One of your first missions is to investigate a hole breach. In there, you'll be able to find a keycard off of Dr. Calvino, but if you look near him, there's also a broken control panel. If you have repair level two, you'll be able to repair this broken control panel, which will seal up a room inside the space station. Once you go back inside the space station, you'll have access to that room, which will connect you to the beams and waves lab. In here, you'll find the Q-beam, which is really going to be one of your more powerful weapons for dealing with the stronger baddies. It does burn through ammo pretty quickly, but as long as you can serve enough to get yourself out of a sticky situation, it is a great weapon. Getting these weapons earlier in the game is going to make the mid game so much easier as you'll have just more options to deal with your enemy. Now before we get to neuro mods, I want to go over some basic tips that I think will make the campaign of prey far more enjoyable and far more rewarding. Searching in this game is a big part of it. I knew that from the start, but I didn't realize just how many things could be searched and how many items were hidden everywhere. Had I known what I know now, the early game would have been a bit different. One tip I can give you right away is always look up. Whatever room you go into, chances are you can climb up on something and get access to a higher ledge. This will open up other adjacent rooms. It'll give you access to good loot that's hidden away on higher up shelves. The glue gun can really aid you in your climbing process, but it's not always necessary to get access. Most cabinets, refrigerators, and toolboxes can be looted. Even some cabinets that don't look lootable are lootable. Medical bays will have a ton of medical supplies hidden away in the cabinets around the room. Now, ammunition is going to be very scarce throughout the campaign. This is going to force you to try and deal with enemies in more creative ways. Before engaging your enemy right away with a firearm, look around a room. See if there's any explosive canisters you can pick up to throw at your enemy. Or maybe turrets that you can repair that'll take on the brunt of the attack. In addition to that, don't be afraid to use your grenades. I ended up using my grenades very sparingly, and by the end game, I had way more than I actually needed, which tells me I should have been using the grenades a lot more on some of the medium level bad guys. Now, when it comes to neuro mods, this is where you can really start to customize your character, but I do think there are some basic neuro mods that are gonna get you pretty far in the game. I already talked about how you need repair level two just to get access to one of the weapons. I think getting both repair to level two 
2 and hacking to level 2 will get you through about 80% of the things you need to repair and hack in the game. You can take those skills further if you really want to specialize in that specific area, but I wouldn't worry about level 3 or level 4 until mid or later in the game. That being said, over a long period of time, level 3 and level 4 hacking can pay for itself as you'll be finding a lot more neural mods from level 4 hacked safes. Mid-game skills such as dismantle can be incredibly handy once you start finding a lot of extra weapons. You want to break those weapons down and you can use those spare parts to repair a lot of other things and just use the general resources from those weapons to make other things. This is something that uh, I use all the time mid and late game. Metabolic boost is another way to sort of get on top of the health game. Now health kits early game seem to be one of the more effective ways to heal you up as food only heals five points of health. If you get metabolic boost, it's going to make your food heal you for 10 points of health and you'll start acquiring a lot of food late game to the point where you'll be stockpiling med kits. So metabolic boost is a great upgrade. And then if you can afford it early game, materials expert will give you that 20% bonus to all of your recycling. This can basically maximize your resources, allowing you to manufacture as many neural mods and ammunition as possible. This is a great way to bolster yourself for mid and late game. You might have to sacrifice some of the more fun neuro mods early on, but if you're going for resource efficiency, this can be a good way to do it. Now, neuro mods aside, there's a few other ways that you can sort of improve your resource management in this game. One thing I'll say is do as many side quests as you have the time or interest for. The side quests are not only fun and they sort of elaborate upon the storyline, but they also unlock station-wide abilities. I'm not going to ruin what happens, but let's just say you can actually unlock some really, really good powers. It might have something to do with the drinking water. Beyond that, you can also unlock chipsets that will give you passive resource regeneration. Once you're mid-game, you'll get access to the bridge of Talos 1, and if you go down to the escape pods, you'll find a briefcase with a psychoactive charger chipset. Once installed, you can basically use this to passively regenerate your Psy power. Anyway, I've had a really fun time playing through Prey. I think I'm going to go through the campaign at least one more time just to try different things. It's not a linear campaign, so you can try accessing different areas of the station earlier than you could before, depending on the abilities that you gain. Also, I definitely want to try out a new path of the alien abilities you get later in the game because they're pretty cool. I hope this guide to Prey helps you maximize your first playthrough of the game. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.